Hey guys, this is Gil Fix here, back with another video. Um, before I get started, once again, I'd like to say that I do not own any of the pictures used in this video. They are found, they are all found on the link right here. This will take you straight to the um, spoiler list. It'll show you all the, all the cards. Just I need to remember to put the annotations in all the videos, but if I rem if I remember to do it when I upload this, the annotation will be right there. So, and one thing I want to mention, I want to say sorry for the um, kind of smaller screen in the last video of this. Um, it, well, it wasn't full screened. I'll try to fix that for this one. So if it's, I'm going to try to fix it, but if it's stretched out or something, I do apologize. But anyways, we are on to the final week of the Avacyn Restored um, spoilers. Now... The problem I found when I was looking through these cards is a lot of them are we're getting down to the like junky stuff, honestly. I mean, there are some good s cards still, but we're getting down to a lot of the junky stuff. Um, and something I forgot to mention, I mean, got forgot to put in a slide, um, is that um, the intro deck, the intro packs have been announced, all the cards in them, so go ahead and check that out if you click on the link right here you can ma maneuver through well I'm not going to put an annotation again but um, I'm gonna, if you click on the annotation from before it will send you there you can navigate through the site really easily and find it so anyways let's get on with this and just a fun fact this this um, powerpoint was over a hundred and seven hundred eighty slides maybe like some somewhere around there like I think about hundred eighty slides. So a lot of cards, um, but I think I'll be able to go through them pretty quickly. White spells, Angel's Mercy, two colorless, two white, instant, common, you gain seven life. It's not going to see play, honestly. And the problem I'm having with the white spells that they're revealing now, they're going back to like your um, basic like core set, um, white is really supporty, help you stay alive longer and just disruption kind of stuff, as you'll see. But this just kind of goes along with that, and it's not that good. Yes, seven life, but eh, too high a cost. Not worth it. Angelic Wall, another one of those kind of disruption cards. Well, not really. It's I think it's a little better, but um, anyways, for one colorless, one white, it's a creature wall. Probably should have been an angel, maybe, I guess. Angel Wall, maybe? I don't know. It's a common, and it's Defender of Flying. Cool idea. Won't see use, but I think it's pretty cool. Arch, Archangel. Now, this is the um, card that was yet to be revealed on the um, packs. And I have to say, it's rather disappointing. It For five colorless, two whites, it's, a cre it's an angel, uncommon, has Flying Vigilant, and a 5-5. Five five. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yes, flying vigilance, you can attack and sell a blocker, but why? It's not going to see play. It's not. I think for like one more, you can go into Avison and you get much better benefits. So yeah, it's just plain not worth it. Um, Builder's Blessing for three, three white, well, three colorless, one white. It's an enchantment uncommon. Untapped creatures you control get plus zero, plus two. Um, there are quite a few cards in this pack that will, that can tap and untap creatures. So, eh, but it's not going to see play. Let's just leave it at that. And the price is, I mean, and the, um, cost is too high, so, no. Call to serve. For one, one colorless, one white, it's an enchantment aura. It's a common. Enchant non-black creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus two, and has flying and is an angel in addition to its other types. I see this pretty much as just a really watered down version of Angelic Destiny, which is a much better card, but if you cannot get your hands on those, because I think they're not super expensive, but they cost a good bit, I, last time I checked. If you can't get a hold of those, this is a nice replacement, I guess, but otherwise, and it, but it, other than that, it's not going to see any play. Now, humans. I'm disappointed with a lot of the white humans. Like this one, for an example. Um, 
Cathedral Sanctifier. It's oh, it's a one drop, one white. Um, human cleric. Un, um, it's a common. Almost said uncommon. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life, and it's a one one. There are much better one drop humans like um, Champion of the Parish, Gideon's Law Keeper, and that's just off the top of my head. So it's not gonna, it's not worth it. It's not gonna see play. Curse Break. For one colorless, one white. It's an instant common. Destroy target and enchantment. You gain two life. Might see some sideboard play, but I think there are better cards for sideboard than this, so probably not. S especially since not too many enchantments are played. Um, top Off the top of my head, Tempered Steel, and there's another one. It's a white spell, two drop, gives creatures plus one, plus one. Plus one. Those are the only things I can think of off the top of my head that would be worth destroying. And um, one of the curse cards, the curse that gives all creatures your opponent control. The um, cursed player has gives them plus one, I mean, minus one, minus one. Uh, it's not. I, I, it's an option, I guess. Defang. Now we're getting into a little more disruption stuff. One colorless, one white. It's an enchantment aura, common enchant creature. Prevent all damage that creature would be dealt by enchant. De prevent all damage that would be dealt by enchanted creature. It's just a worse pac pacifism, which doesn't even see play. Th so this won't. But the art's kind of different. Devour. No, Devolt Champlain. Devolt Champlain, I guess. Um, for two colorless, one white, it's a human cleric uncommon. You tap it and tap two untapped cre humans you control. Exile t target artifact or enchantment. Um, sideboard in some kind of white, not mono white, but like green white or blue white. Or even red white, which I'll get into that later. Um, human deck, this could see a sideboard play, but I don't think it's worth mainboard. And it's barely worth sideboard if it is. Divine Deflection for X colorless, one white. It's an instant rare. Prevent the next X damage that would be dealt to you or permanence you control this turn. If damage is prevented this way, Divine Deflection deals that much damage to target player. No. Once again, we're getting disruption. Keeps you alive a little bit longer. Did I say deflection? I don't even know. I. I I'm, I just went brain dead. I can... Disruption is what I meant to say. Yeah, that's it. Once again, we're getting into disruption and making you survive longer. You're taking you're taking less damage, which means you can do more stuff. Uh, no, it's not going to see play. And guys, I hate to do this, but I'll be right back. Alright guys, I am back and I just decided to skip the last slide. Well, I decided to go on to the next slide because... I was done talking about it. But anyways, um, next card is Farbog Explorer. For two colorless, one white is a human scout, common, and it has Swamp lock, Walk, which if you don't know, because like Land Walk hasn't been too used lately, um, this creature is unblockable as long as the defending creature controls the swamp. Now, how it work is like if it was like let's say Mountain Walk. It would be the same exact effect, only if the, the defending player controls a mountain, and etc, etc. But anyways, this is kind of a cool, well, and it's 2-3. Kind of cool, kind of a cool card, um, sideboard card for humans, maybe, against, like, black decks. But I don't, unless it's mono black, like, um, zombies are, and I think that's actually it. Like, sideboard card to get in zombies because unless they are running just mono black they're gonna have the dual lands and they might not even have their swamps out this is kind of like worst case scenario I guess because like the um, core 12 well the core set um, dual lands require the um, basic land but in some cases they could have the other um, basic land so it it 
Yeah, at most this card would be a sideboard card. Gold Knight Commander for three colorless, one white. It's a human cleric soldier. Uncommon when whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control. Creatures you control get plus one plus one until the end of turn. Um this wouldn't be too bad if like I mean if you can get a lot of like one drops you can just keep boosting and boosting and boosting stuff. But you, we've for humans we've got stuff like uh Mayor of Averbrook even um adaptive automation if you don't want to worry about um, it flipping this and those are, per are as long as they're on the field this one is only until the end of turn so it doesn't carry on through your opponent's turn it's a, and it's only a 2-2 two -two. that doesn't help it so this probably won't see any play though I might try it doubtably but just depending holy Holy Justicar, just Justicar, I guess. For three colorless, one white. It's a human cleric, uncommon. For two, for two colorless and one white, and tapping it, tap target creature. If that creature is a zombie, exile it, and it's a two-one. This is a really stupid card, honestly. I mean, it's cool that if it taps, if it, if it taps a zombie with the effect, then it exiles it, but I mean, why? It's we already have better tapping effects, like Gideon's Lawkeeper, like I said before, um, and a, being a four drop with only two one, that's not helping it. So and the cost for the effect is really high. So no, just no. Leap of faith. Um. For two colorless, one white. It's an instant. Un it's an instant common. Target creature gains flight until the end of turn to prevent all damage that would be dealt to that creature this turn. It's a cool idea, but I think it's a little too high on the cost. I mean, if, even if it was just one colorless, one white, it'd be a lot better. But paying three just to give it flying and pretty and pretty much indestructible. I mean. I don't think it'll see too much play. And Midnight Duelist. For one white, it's a human soldier, common, has protection from vampires, and it's a one two. Now I find this really stupid too. I mean here's the thing guys, I really like humans. Like ever since I one of the first decks I've made and well, am still working on is humans. Green white humans what well, is going to be my first competitive like usable deck and I like humans so I'm gonna be extremely biased towards them but then there's stuff like this that just makes me think no this is just stupid the reason I think this is because um there's I think it's called elite inquisitor from Innistrad it's a 2-2 for two white it's a it's a human has vigilance and protection from vampires, zombies, and werewolves. So, it's everything this thing is, and then some, for only one more white. So, this is pretty stupid. It won't see play. Mid Vast Protector, for three colorless, one white, it's a human wizard, common. When it enters the battlefield, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Another one of those cards that I feel if it it would have been like loads better if it was a one drop and a one one. Because the effect's not bad. It's not necessarily bad, but just paying four just to give something protection from a color, why? It's not worth it. Moonlight guys for two colorless one white is a spirit common has flying and for three colorless one white prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by moon moonlight guys this turn and it's a two one um one of those cards and it's just no it's not gonna see play if the effect was 
less, maybe, but no. Moorland Inquisitor. For one colorless, one white, it's a human soldier common. And its effect for two colorless, one white, Moorland Inquisitor gains first strike until the end of the turn. Humans have better first strikers. Sim well, in some cases, double strikers, I guess. Because double strike has one first strike, one regular strike. If you're going with non-double strikers, there's um, Thalia. I forget the full name, but it's Thalia. His first strike and increases non-creature spells by one colorless. The cost for one for non-creature spells for one colorless. If you guys know what I'm talking about, okay. If not, uh, I don't know what to say. But it's better than this because it permanently has first strike and maybe this would be better if it was like for one colorless one white give target creature first strike but as it is no well either or would make it better but no near heart near heart near heath pilgrim yeah that's it for one colorless one white it's a human cleric uncommon has soul bond which is our first soul bond card I think but as before you can pair with an unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield this I didn't know I thought once it was um I thought it was only when it entered the battlefield I think I might have said this in the first one too but that makes soul bond much better because just for an example of this if I bond this with something and then that cre the bonded creature well the paired creature that's it gets destroyed then you this isn't just dead. The effect isn't just dead on it. You can actually pair it with something you're putting into play. Which is pretty cool. Hang on one second. Ah, V8. Um, anyways. The um, other effect is as long as it's paired with, with another creature, both creatures have life link. This is another one of those things. I mean, we're going back to like kind of stalling. Like stalling, survival like you're gaining life but in this case I don't think it's nearly as bad uh, but it's not worth it I mean there's much better things I mean it's pretty good for an uncommon I'll give I'll say that much but you've got for humans you've got so much already that you're trying to play with um champion of the parish Marian crusaders Kidian's Lawkeeper, I guess. Um, just there's so much that you could do. Well, Silverblade Paladin, too, which is in this set. There's just so many better white creatures that it's not worth playing. Riders of Gavany. Um, uh, for two colorless, one white. Oh, for two colorless, two white. It's a human knight, rare, has vigilant, and as, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Human creatures you control have protection from creatures of the chosen type. Now I find this to be quite a bit better than um crap shield guy um mid vast protector um if for no other reason then it gives all creatures all humans it but here's the thing like it has good effect vigilance is nice three three is pretty cool it's just that humans just they're small beater and they're small small cost boosting creatures I remember when I first started and looked up some YouTube videos one of the decks was um like mono white weenie which the main idea was just get small creatures that can pump bigger creatures get small a lot of small creatures out so that we have blockers small attackers and that's pretty much what modern humans I guess you could say have become and this is just too big a cost for that kind of playstyle. Righteous Blow for one white. It's an instant common. Righteous Blow deals two damage to target attacking creature or blocking creature. Once again, we're getting to the like classic core white stuff. It's not worth it. I mean, it's pretty cool that it's kind of a burn-ish burn effect for white, but it's not worth it because you can only target attacking or blocking creatures. If it was just creatures, maybe. Because it gives them a source of um, destruction, but no. S 
Seraph of Dawn for two colorless, two whites. It's an angel, common, flying, lifelink. And it's a 2 4. Nope. Once again, for just like. For, uh, yes, quite a bit more. You can go to Avacyn. But it's. Mm, the point is, it's not worth it. Yes, flying lifelinks. Like. Blah, blah, blah. Flying lifelink is pretty good, and two power, uh, it's not worth it. Spectral guard, gate guards for four colors, one white. It's a spirit soldier. Common has soul bond as long as it's paired with another creature. Both creatures have vigilance, and it's a two five. Thing that kills this is it's really high cost. I think five is way too much. Just I don't know. I feel it would be much better if it had a lower cost and one of the lower. Sorry about that, Skype. Um I that's about it. There being valiant for one colorless, one white. It's a human soldier, common, and it has vigilance. And it's a 2 1. No. Yes, it has vigilance, but I think a lot of vigilance creatures have, like, good enough power and then, like, a pre and pretty good, um, like, decent power, pretty good toughness, so that they can attack, but still block something with it, and possibly, and stay alive sometimes. And this just doesn't fit that, so I don't think it's worth it. Voice of provi pro Provenance for two for four colorless, two whites. It's an angel, common, flying. When it enters the battlefield, put a one one white human creature token onto the battlefield, and it's a three three. No, its cost is way too high for just one human token. Yes, it's 3-3. Yes, it has flying, but that's it. Once you get that token, it's just a one-time blocker, short-time attacker, then it's a flying creature. That's about it. It's not worth it. Zealous Strike. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains first strike until the end of turn. Oh, and it's for one colorless, one white. And it's common. Instant. No. I mean kind of a cool idea, but it's just one of those basic common cards that is not going to be used. Now we're going on to blue spells. Alchemist Apprentice for one colorless, one blue. It's a human wizard, common, sacrifice it, draw a card, and it's a 1-1. One, one. It's not going to see play. I don't see why you would play this. A mass of comp a mass the component for three colorless, one blue. Source three, draw three cards, and put a card from your hand to the bottom of your library. There are much better drawing cards than this. Like think twice, ponder, and that's just off the top of my head. Um, it's not going to see play. Captain of the Mists, mists for two co colorless, one blue. It's a human wizard. It's a rare. When, when enough, whenever another human enters the battlefield under control, untap Captain of Mist for one colorless, two blue, and tapping it, you may tap or untap target permanent. And it's a 2-3. Now, we're getting back into the tapping thing. I don't think this is really worth it, but if you wanted to make some sort of gimmicky tap deck, <coughs> four cards off the top of my, off the top of my head that um, tap stuff, Gideon's Lawkeeper, Avacyn's Pilgrim, um, the one that I said the one that I said before isn't worth it. Then this, and that's off the top of my head. Then um, Ty, Ty, Tayo, the the new plan blue planeswalker person thing. It has an effect that has to do with um tapping, tapping or keeping keeping creatures tapped or something. So you could do it if you wanted to, but not likely to happen, so I don't know. You know what, guys? I will be right back. Alright, guys, I'm back. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on this card. 
<coughs> pretty much all I did was turn off my Skype, so nothing will pop up down here again. Anyways, Crippling Chill for two colorless, one blue. It's an instant common. Tap target creature. It does not untap during... Etc, etc. Draw a card. Um... Guess if you want to make that tapping deck I was talking about before, okay, but it's not going to see play. And another thing that's kind of cool about it is it can can be um, flashed back with um, Snapcaster Mage, so you could add that to the deck, I guess. Anyways, Dead Eyed Navigator for four colorless, two blue. It's a spirit rare with Soul Bond, as long as it's paired with another creature. Each of those creatures has um, exact for one color colorless one blue, exile this creature, then return it to your battlefield under your control, and it's a 5-5. Five five. If its soul bond effect was a lot better, it would be, if it, its soul bond effect was better, it might see play, even though it does have a higher cost, but it's not worth it. It's stupid for that flicker, I think it is, I said before, in one of the past videos, flicker, I think it is, but it's, flicker's kind of stupid to me. I don't see it making a huge effect in anything. Devastation Tide. I'm not sure if I talked about this one before. Eh, I don't remember. So I'm just going to talk about it real quick again. It's three colorless, two blue, sorcery, rare. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hand. And its miracle cost is one colorless, one blue. It's an option for um, board clearing. I mean, you can set your opponent back a lot with this, but you have to get its miracle for, to make it worth it. Um, but it could see play in, like, Delver. Dreadwaters for three colorless, one blue, sorcery, common. Target player puts the top X cards from his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of lands you control. No. There's not, like, there's not any milling decks. There's no point in milling your opponent for much you could do something, I guess, but mm, no. El God, El Gaud, Shield Mate, Mate. I guess <laughs> for three colorless, one blue. It's a human soldier. It's a common, which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool considering its effect. Soul has soul bond, as long as it's paired with another creature. Both creatures have hex proof. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And it's a 2-3. Hang on, I'm going to take a drink before I state my opinions. Mm. My throat always gets so dry during these videos. Pretty cool. I think this is going to be one of those cards that brings blue-white humans up. Um, I mean, you, if you can give your um, Champion of the Parish that's been boosted up with stuff, um, Hexproof, it's, it's good to go. It's pretty good to go. So, yeah, I. That's just one example. I guess you could give, like, Mirren Crusader, Hexproof, etc., etc. Good card. Especially for a common. Anyways, favorable wins for one colorless, one blue. Enchantment, uncommon. Creatures you control with flying gets plus one, plus one. I don't think there's. Well, I guess spirits. But, uh, is it worth it? I guess that's rather up to you. I mean, you can get your Lingering Souls tokens up to two twos. Um, you can get... I think it's Dungeon Geist? I don't remember exactly. Um, in other words, pretty much anything that has flying becomes a bigger beater, I guess. Not bad, but I don't see it doing too much. Fettergeist for two colorless, one blue. Um, it's a spirit common flying at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice Fettergeist unless you can you pay one colorless for each other creature control. No. <coughs> That's just stupid. Honestly, it's not gonna see play. Fleeting distraction for for one blue. It's an instant uh, common target creature gets minus one, minus zero until the end of turn, draw a card. No. If it gave minus one, minus one, it'd be better. But minus one, minus zero, no. Galvanic Alchemist for two colorless, one blue. It's a human wizard. It's a common, has soul bond. 
As long as it's paired with another creature, each of those creatures has for two col colorless, one blue. Untap this creature. Once again, we're going into the tapping deck kind of thing, which this could see play in, but otherwise it's not going to see play. Geist Snatch. Now, I'll... Okay. <laughs> um, for two colorless, two blue, it's an instant um, common counter-target creature spell. Put a 1-1 one, one blue spirit token with flying onto the battlefield. Remember when I said I wonder what the blue um, spirit token will be brought out with? Well, this is it. Only card. And it's disappointing, I have to say. First of all, its cost is pretty high for a counter spell. Um, a lot of the counter spells you see are no more than like three, three converted mana cost. Like dissipate sees some play, well, at least used to. Um, mana leaks only two. I don't think there's going to see much play for four, especially since it only counters creature spells. And in return, you only get one blue, one one one, blue spirit creature token with flying. It's not worth it. I don't think so. <coughs> Ghost form for one colorless, one blue. It's a sorcery. Up to two. Up to two target creatures are unblockable this turn. Cool idea, it's just... No, I don't see it being used. Maybe Dover, I guess. But, probably not. Um, Ghostly Touch, for one colorless, one blue. It's an aura enchantment. Um, for It's an uncommon enchant creature. Enchanted creature has whenever this creature attacks, you may tap or untap target permanent. Another one of those tapping things, I guess you could do something with the um, blue-white angel in the tapping deck, I guess. Get this out without having to pay its cost, which isn't that high to pay anyways, so... But yeah, tapping. Griff... Griff Vanguard. Um, I'm a little disappointed with this, and I'll explain why. Um, for four colorless, one blue. Human knight, common, flying. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. And it's a 3-2. Now, one thing I have a lot of problems with my with my human deck. Um, just ignore the phone, if you could hear it. <coughs> my complaint, my problem with humans have always been that I have trouble with flying creatures because there's no flying humans. Well, guess what? We got one. And normally I would think, woohoo, that is great. But first of all, I'm running green-white humans, so this doesn't really help me. But this would still be cool in... Blue white humans, if its mana cost wasn't 5 and it wasn't a 3 2. I mean, one of those could go, like, either the converted mana cost could go down or its uh, attack power up, I guess. Like, it could have been a. It could have been a f 4 4 1 and it would have been better, honestly. Or even a 3 3 and it would have been better. 3 4 would be insane, I think. Well, not insane, but that will make it ama amazing in my books. Not completely amazing, but better. A lot better. And all you get in return is to draw a card. This won't see play. Haven Gull Scab. For five colorless, one blue. It's a zombie horror. Common. Whenever it attacks, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. And it's a 4-5. This is just plain stupid. A lot of the blue stuff is kind of a little bit weird, but... A lot of the blue zombies, which is why it's mostly mono-black zombies you see played. But this is just stupid. Another one of those stupid common cards. Into the Void. Um, it's for three color this. One blue sorcery. Return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand. It's an uncommon. Um, uh, it's not necessarily but bad, I just don't think it'll see any play. I mean, disruption, but, eh. Lone Revent, Revenant, Revenant, I guess. Lone Revenant, I guess? Okay, that's it. Um, this is one of the intro pack cards, and for some reason I feel now that I might have discussed this before, but I don't remember for sure, so I'm gonna go over it again real quick. Three colorless, two blues, it's a Spirit, rare, has hexproof. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, if you control no other creatures, look at the top four cards. 
of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest to the bottom of your library in any order. This wouldn't be too bad if it was like on a one drop one one without hex proof. Yep. If we ignored everything else, like if we ignored the hex proof, ignored that it was five hundred mana cost, and just made it like a one for one blue and made it a one one, it would be pretty good. It'd just be a pretty much another um, ponder. <coughs> that doesn't transform to Delver. But as a 5 drop, with 4-4, four, four, it's not going to see play. Lunar Mystic, for 2 colors, one, 2 blues, it's a human wizard. Um, it's a rare, whenever you cast an instant spell, you may pay 1 if you do draw a card. Really similar to, um, shoot, I forget what it's called now. Um, Mentor of the Meek, yeah, that's it. Really close to that, but like you can get for like one more off your off your think twice, you can get two cards instead, which is pretty cool. But it's high cost just make makes me say no. Which is sad because it could have been good. It could have seen play, I think. Mass appeal for two colorless, one blue. It's a sorcery. Uncommon draw a card for each human you control. I like this for blue white humans. Because you're you can get a lot of pluses, especially if you run Mentor of the Meek and you can draw, draw for every every time you put one of your cards in one of your creatures in play, like your humans. So you're getting pluses off that. Then if you play this, you're getting even more pluses. So it's an option. I don't I don't think you'll see too much play, but I think it's pretty good. Hang on, let me get a drink. All right. Mist Raven for two colorless, two blues. It's a bird common. It has flying. Whenever it enters the battlefield, return target creature to its owner's hand. And it's a 2 2. Its cost is too high. Why? I feel this could have been another one of those good cards. Like, uh, I honest, uh, it can be a lot better. Like, for one thing, make it like a three drop at least. And give it flash. I think those two things would make this pretty good. Or at least usable. I mean, come on. Four drop. <sighs> no. Outwit. It's a one drop instant. Common. Counter target spell that targets a player. I kind of like this. I mean, it kind of helps against burn and... Helps against burn. Helps against um, curse enchantments. Like... I think it's Curse of Death's Hold that gives your creatures minus one, minus one. But it has to target you. It has to enchant you. It it targets you, so this would counter it. And since that's a pretty common side deck card, you could side deck this against people. Or even main deck that no, You would probably side deck. Well, sideboard. I'm thinking you go. Sideboard this kind of stuff. Like, But main board, I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. But I think it's pretty good, especially for a common. Probably one of the better commons I've seen so far. Well, we've seen it so far. Peel from reality. For one colorless, one blue, it's an instant common. Return target creature you control. And target creature you don't control to the owner's hands. No. I guess you can reuse your sta Snapcaster Mage and disrupt your opponent a little bit, but it's just not worth it, I don't think. <coughs> Rock Crown Ghoul. <laughs> um, for four colorless, one blue. Zombie, common. Whenever it dies, target player puts the top five cards of his or her library into the graveyard. And it's a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, converted mana cost could be a lot lower. This is my problem with a lot of cards in Magic in general. A lot of stuff could have been a lot better if it had lower mana cost. This would probably be a prime example. Now, Scrap Skin Drake. Um, for two colorless, one white, well, one blue, is a zombie Drake common flying. It can only be, it can only block flying creatures. Well, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's a two three, yes, but eh, not worth it. 
Second guess. This is a pretty cool card. For one colorless, one blue, it's an instant, um, uncommon counter target spell that that's the second spell cast this turn. Now this is pretty cool. I didn't think about this until until uh, today actually when I was making the putting the cards down for this. Um, but you could play a spell. Your opponent can mana leak that spell. Then you can use this to counter their mana leak because it was a second spell played, which is pretty cool. It's an option. Um, there's just so many. I think this is one of the better uncommons of the pack. One, of the, maybe even one of the better cards. I don't know if it's going to see play, but this is my opinion. I feel it's pretty good. Spectral Prison for one colorless, one blue aura enchantment. For, it's a common enchant enchant creature. Enchant creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap untap step, and if it becomes a target of the spell, sacrifice. Spectral present. Bad card is bad. Um, it's not worth it. Okay, Spirited Away. For five colorless, two blues. Right away it seems pretty bad, but uh, I don't know. Um, enchantment Aura. Rare. Enchant Creature. You, you control Enchanted Creature and it gets plus two plus two and has flying. I don't think any of the um, high cost um, take control of your opponent's creature cards are really that good. I mean, like mind control, and I know there was one from like um, the Scars of Mirrodin uh, block. I forget exactly what it's called, but it gave the creature infect as well. They they don't see play. This is going to be in the same category, but I think it's better except for the high cost. High cost. Stern mentor. Three colorless, one blue, human wizard, uncommon, has soul bond, and as long as it's paired with another creature, each of those creatures have, has target player to puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Another one of those milling cards that's just not going to see play. Uh, stolen goods, three colorless, one blue, it's a sorcery rare, target opponent exiles cards from the top of his or her library until he or she exiles a non-land card until the end of turn you may cast that spell without paying its mana cost. That's pretty cool. <coughs> Sorry about that. But I'm not sure if the cost really, the mana cost is really worth it. That's just been my problem with this set in general, I guess. But it's a pretty cool card. Cool idea, at least. Vanishment. It's a for four colorless, one blue. It's an instant uncommon. Put target non-land permanent on top of the donor's library. And its miracle cost is one. One blue. Now, it yes, you're disrupting your opponent by one, getting rid of one of their um, permanents, most likely you're going to be a spell, a um, creature. Um, but, and you're disrupting their next draw because they have to draw into it instead of drawing something that might help them. But, if, like, you're, is, the only thing I could see this being run in is Delver, and will Delver have room? That's the big thing. Will Delver have room to run this? Um, I don't know. It might see play, It probably, but it pro I don't think it will. Um, and we're going on to Black Spells, but guys, I'm going to take another break. I'm so... Alright guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I just... Uh, just have to keep cutting out. Um, but I need to hurry up because I'm already like 42 minutes into this and we're only into black spells. Anyways. Barter in blood. For two colorless, two blacks. It's a sorcery. Uncommon. Each player sacrifices two creatures. It won't see play. There are much better black destruction cards such as Doom, play Doom Blade and Go for the Throat. Simple as that. But it does have a pretty cool quote from Soren Markov. Blood Artist for one colorless, one black. It's a vampire uncommon. Whenever a blood artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. And it's a um, zero one. It's not that good. I know there's a better, like better version of this in um, the core set. 
And even that's not very useful. Zombies aren't that good. I mean, not saying zombies. Vampires aren't that good. But as you can see now, once we get into more of the uncommons and... Uh, co <coughs> commons, uncommons, and bare minimum of the rares, you'll see a lot of the vamp... A lot more vampires coming out. A lot more humans coming out. Stuff like that. Um, blood flow connoisseur, connoisseur, I guess. For two colorless, one black. It's a vampire common. Sacrifice a creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it is only a one one. Another quote from Soren Markov. I never noticed that before. But, um, not that good. There's just better cards than this that better vampires than this they get plus one plus one counters. Um, like I said before vampires aren't that good but still th there, there are better ones than this. Bone splinters for one co for one black it's a sorcery common and an, as an additional cost to bone splinter sacrifice a creature destroy target creature. Once again better destruction in the form of doom blade and go for the throat. Now we get into Butcher Ghoul. For one colorless, one black, it's a zombie common, and it has Undying. And it's a 1-1. One, one. So it's not necessarily bad. I think it's bearable for its cost. I mean, this might see play. If for no other reason than it has Undying. Corpse Traders. For three colorless, one black. It's a human rogue. Uncommon. For two colorless, Colorless one black, sacrifice a creature, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a card from the from it. That player discards that card, activates ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. And it is a three three. Not very good. Not good at all. The black humans have always been pretty crappy, so remember how before I said that stuff like um white white Green, white, blue, white, and red, white, white humans might see play. Well, black, white humans won't. Let's leave it at that. Um, Crypt Creeper. Um, for one colorless, one black. It's a zombie common. Sacrifice it and exile target card from the graveyard. And it's a 2 1. This won't see play. I honestly don't think. Maybe a sideboard card. But then you've got better stuff like um, Neil Spellbomb and something else. I'm forgetting. But there are better cards. Now this one I like. Dark Imposter for two colorless, one black. It's a vampire assassin rare. For four colorless and two blacks, exile target creature and put a plus one plus one counter on Dark Imposter. Dark Imposter has all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with it. Now it's caught with with it, yeah. Though I do think that four colorless, two black is a bit high for it to cut cost. I think it does kind of pay off because you can you can take your opponent's like you can exile you can exile your opponent's prime, prime any of the titans really and benefit from it when this guy attacks. Um at least I think that's what it means by activated abilities. Um I'm trying to think of something else. I don't. I don't know. Just, I feel this has potential. I get kinda in some sort of black deck, I guess. Anyways, moving on. Death Wind for X colorless, one black. It's an instant colorless target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. Now this one's not. This isn't that good. Yes, it's another destruction card. But yeah, but. In the end, you have to pay more for it than you do Doomblade or go for the throat, so it's pretty bad. Oh, and, um, Black Sun Zenith does better for, because it destroys multiple creatures. For pretty much the same idea, maybe one, one more black, I think, or something like that, maybe two. But it's still better than this. Dread Slaver. I don't remember reading this card before, but I guess I'll read it now. For three colorless, two black, zombie horror rare. Whenever an, whenever a creature dealt damage by Dread Slaver dies, return it to the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Uh, 
I do remember reading it now, like when I was looking over it myself. But um, not too bad. I think maybe zombies will play it, especially since they have um, two ramp, two um, not ramp, um, two um, power up guys in the form of I want to say drugs to call, but I think that is the spirit guy. One of the um, one of the um, like the blue black booster, and then they have a, a mono black one from the corset. This might see some play. It has potential, I think. Driver of the Dead for three colors, one black. The vampire common. Whenever it dies, return target creature card with converted mana cost of two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This isn't too bad. Um, I'm not sure exactly where you where you would play it, but uh, it has potential, I think. And it's 3-2, so it can hold its own for a while until it does get killed, and you can get something smaller out, but eh, not bad for a common, I'll say that much. Essence Harvest for two colorless, one black, it's a sorcery. Common, target player loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Another kind of cool effect, I don't see it seeing too much play, but eh. Uh, I think it's a cool effect, but it probably won't see much play. Like I said before. Evernight Shade. This one I don't remember. Okay. No, I think I might have read this. Now that I think about it. For three colorless, one black, it's a shade. Uncommon. For one black, f for the effect, one black, and it gains plus one, plus one until the end of turn. And it has undone. So I think this is pretty cool. Once again, I don't know where it'll see play what kind of deck you'll see play in, but it has potential. Not bad for an uncommon, too. Hang on one second. <clears throat> Anyways. Ghoul Flesh for one black. It's an enchantment aura, common. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets minus one, minus one, and, and is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. This isn't going to see any play whatsoever. Um, Yes, it's minus one, minus one, but um, Tragic Slip does it better, especially for black one drop spells. Um, you don't need to turn anything to a black zombie if you're running zombies, because you're only going to be running zombies. Did I mention zombies? Anyways. Um, Gloom Surgeon. For one colorless, one black. It's a spirit rare. If combat damage would be dealt to it, prevent that damage and exile that many cards from the top of your library. It's it's a two one. And this won't see play. I honestly don't think so. It's not necessarily bad, but first of all, just send them from the top. If it send them just from the top of your deck to, to the graveyard, it would be a lot better. Well, top of your library to the graveyard, it would be much better. But since you're exiling them, there's no way to get them back that I know of, and there's no ability to get them back. But it's not. It might see play. Eh, I don't know. Probably not, though. Grave Exchange for four colorless, two black. It's a sorcery. It's a sorcery common. Return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Target cre target player sacrifices a creature. Eh, it's too high a cost. No. It's all right for a common, but. It's not going to see any play because it's just too high a cost, which kills a lot of cards. Um, hang on one second. There we go. Um, next card is Haunted Ghoul for one colorless. It's a black zombie. Well, for one for one black. I, I think I said colorless. Um, it's a zombie common, and it can't block humans, and it's a one-two. This is worse than Grave Crawler, I think it is, so it won't see play the one that you can cast it from the graveyard. So this is, isn't that good. Male field ma male felled twins for five colorless one black. It's a zombie uncommon when it dies, put two 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 black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. And it is a four four. Um no. Once again, too high a cost, not enough payback, not enough pay in return, I guess. I don't know. 
that is not that good. Um, Marobat for five colorless, one black. It's flying. Pay four life or generate it. No, it's a four one two. So that doesn't help it. Um, if it was like three one and it's converted mana cost with three, that would help a lot. And if you didn't have to pay four life, it's not that good. It's not going to see play. Mental Agony for three colorless, one black. It's a sorcery common. Target player discards two cards and loses two life. Kind of high cost, but it's it's could possibly see play. Necrobite for two colorless, one black. Instant common. Target creature gains t death touch until the end of turn. Regenerated. I find this to be a pretty cool card. Um, I don't know what exactly deck would run it, but I feel like if some, like, if for no other reason than reason than you can regenerate it. Um, death touch. You could choose the way I see it. You would choose either to get, regenerate it or to give it death touch. The way I see it. Perhaps I'm just not seeing it the right way, but still pretty cool card. Especially for a common, but anyways, polluted dead for four colorless, one black. It's a zombie common. Whenever it di dis whenever it dies, destroy target land. It's a three three. This it, this won't see play. It's not that good. Really high cost. That kills a lot of cards. Anyways, predator gambit, predators gambit for one black. It's an enchantment aura common. Enchant, or cre enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus one, and it has intimidate as long as the controller controls no other creatures. So, mm, no. Honestly, I think it was stupid to make some make the effect that if you control no other creatures, it gets an effect. But eh, this is just especially one of those cards I won't see play. Not not too many enchantments do, well, and or enchantments do so. Renegade Demon for three colorless, two blacks. It's a demon, common, and it's a five-three. No effect. No. There are much better cards because they have effects. Searchlight Geist for two colorless, one black. It's a spirit, common. It has flying. For three, three, for the uh, for three colorless, one black. It gains death touch until the end of the turn, and it's a two-one. So it's kind of cool. I mean. I think there are better death touch things out there, like acidic slime and I guess Gliss of the Traitor. But I think it's Gliss of the Traitor. If I'm thinking of the right card. Um, but it it might see play, but probably won't. Like if it just straight out had death touch, it would see play. But in this case, I don't think it will. Soul Cage Fiend for one colorless, two blacks. It's a demon common. When it dies, each player loses three life, and it's a three two. Um, no. Yeah, it's a semi cheap meter, but not worth it. There's better stuff out there. Undead Ex Executioner for three colorless, one black. It's a zombie common. <coughs> When it dies, you may have target creature get minus two, minus two until the end of turn, and there's a two, two. Um, skin renders better because it gives a creature minus three, minus three, and I think it has one less converted mana cost. So, yeah. No good. Unhallowed pack for two colorless, one black. It's an enchantment aura. Common. Enchant creature. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Um, there are better regeneration cards, like the, um, uh, white one in this pack is a good example of it, and um, unburial rights. I mean, because those can just straight out get anything from your d graveyard. This one has to has to get it. Um, get the one it's enchanted. So no, this won't see play. I'm sorry, I'm gonna distract. Anyways, we're getting on to red spells. Aggra ag aggravate, aggravate, I guess. Yeah, for three colors, two reds. It's an instant. 
Uncommon deals one damage to each target player. Each creature target player controls. Each creature dealt damage this way. Attacks this turn if a able. No. It's not that good. Anyways, banner raised for one for one red. It's an instant instant common creature you can creatures you control get plus one plus zero until the end of turn. No, another not good spell because most of your red stuff is gonna want to burn rather than just get boosted. But uh, uh, I don't know. Battle him for one colorless, one red. At it's an instant common add. One red to your mana pool for each creature you control. This is pretty cool. I mean, you pay two and you can get quite a bit of red mana in return. Nice to see that red's getting a little bit of uh, mana ramp here, I guess. Um, burn at the stake for two colorless, three reds. It's a sorcery rare. As, as an additional cost to burn at the stake, tap any number of untapped creatures you control. It deals damage to target creature or player equal to the three times the number of creatures tapped this way. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's costly, very costly, but kind of a cool effect. I mean, you tap one, you're dealing three. You tap two, six, etc., etc. Um, which could end in good game if your opponent can't really can't stop it. Well, like mana leak or something, but it's cost. I think it's gonna kill it. Though I would love to be proven wrong. I think this card is actually pretty good. Anyways, next card is Dangerous Wa Wager for one colorless, one red. It's an instant common. Discard your hand, then draw two cards. The reason I think this could be usable is kind of the thought that you use up all resources you have, and then you just draw two. And then instead of discarding your hand, you just draw two cards, which is, which could be pretty cool. And if you just have like big stuff in like reanimator decks, like all you have is like an Ellis Norn and a Worm Coil, for an example, then you just got more stuff for um, for you to use on burial rights to get back to the field. So I think this might see play. But I, one card I thought I was, uh, that I thought was good during um. Dark Ascension. It was another red kind of discard your hand, draw cards thing. I forget what it's called. But I think it was discard your hand, draw cards equal to the number of the cards discard. I thought that was going to be good for a red draw, but it turned out not to be. Faithless Looting just kind of took over. But yeah, this. I'm, I hope I'm right with this one. Next card is Demolish. For three colorless, one red, it's a sorcery, common, destroy target artifact or land. I don't... Yes, you could disrupt their um, mana for with um, lands, by destroying lands. But there's a b better card, I think it's Ancient Grudge, to destroy artifacts. So, this won't see play. Dual casting for three colorless, one red. Enchant target... Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has, for one red, tap it. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose a new target for the copy. It's not too bad. Might see some play in red decks, but I'm not counting on anything. And it's a rare. I'm not sure if this is rare or worthy. I will be surprised if this sees play, but it's not necessarily bad. It's just. I don't know. But it's not in that, I just don't think you'll see play. Falcon Wrath Exterminator. Once again, we're getting into some vampire cards. For one colorless, one red. It's a vampire archer uncommon. When it deals combat da damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. For two colorless, one red. It deals damage to target creature equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on it. I think if zombies... Um, ah, vampires ever see play, this will be would be pretty cool. And what I mean by vampires is not just like one vampire card like um, Olivia Voldren was back when Grixis was really good. I mean like actual vampire deck, not just one card. But, eh, not bad. 
Fervent Cathar. It for two colorless, one red. It's a human knight. Common. It has haste, and when it enters the battlefield, target creature cannot block this turn. And it's a two one. So this is one of the first of the um, red humans. And it's not necessarily bad. I'm just not sure if it's worth it. Like, if you wanted to make red human, red, red humans or red white or red blue or red green, I guess. This would be probably one of the key players on the red side. Off the top of my head that I can think of, but... Uh, it's not too bad. It's just... Uh, I don't know. Anyways, next card is Gang of Devils. For three... For five red... Uh, uh, stop and think. Stop and think. For five colorless, one red. It's a devil. And it's an uncommon. When it dies, deal three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three target creatures and or players. <laughs> uh, flavor text is kind of funny. Um, and it's a 3-3. Three, three. Um, this won't see play. Just because it's such a high cost for such little gain, it's not worth it. Oh, it's an un uncommon. It's definitely not worth uncommon. It's more common worthy. Anyways, next card is um, Guys of Flames, I guess? For one red, it's an enchantment aura common. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one, minus one, and attacks each turn if able. No. Not good. Enough said. Handwire Lancer for two colorless, one red. It's a human knight. Common. It has soul bond, and as long as it's paired with another creature, both creatures have first strike, and it's a two-two. So yeah, this is another key player in like red, red human decks, red, red something because I don't think mono red humans will be good. I don't even know if humans in general will be good, but um, it's pretty good. Um, I think one of the reasons they put in red humans is that, like, now that Avacyn, now that it's kind of a fight between, um, angels and demons, the humans are starting to try to fight back against their enemies throughout the, um, Innistrad block, like the vamp vampires, zombies, werewolves, which, which I want to say something about that at the end of the video, the werewolves, um, they're fighting back, so, like, rage, red, I guess. That'd be my logic, but this one isn't too bad. First strike is nice. Haven Gull Vampire. For three colorless, one red. It's a vampire. Uncommon when it deals combat damage to a player. Put plus one plus one. Put a plus one plus one counter on it. When another vamp when another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on it. And it's a two two. So, like I said before, if vampires do get good somehow. This will probably see play, but I don't see it anytime soon. Heirs of Stormkirk. For two colorless, two reds, it's a vampire common. Has Intimidate, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And it has two, two. So, yeah, this one can probably get counters pretty quickly because it has Intimidate, so it cannot be blocked. Except by artifact creatures, or other red creatures. But still... It's, I think it's pretty cool. For vampires. If those ever see play. Hounds of Grizzlebrand. For two colorless, two reds. It's an elemental hound. It's a rare. It has double strike and undying. And it's a 2-2. Two -two. That's pretty cool. The fact that you can, like, attack with it, double strike. If it, your opponent does manage to kill it off, it will come back as a 3-3 three -three with double strike. That's pretty insane, I think. So, if reds do go kind of... I guess this could see play in red... Red aggro decks. Like, I know red... Green red or red green or whatever. Aggro is... Somewhat common. So... Um... This could see play in that, I guess. Ugh, I'm really distracted, guys. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, Kessig Malcontent, Malcontents, I guess? For two colorless, one red, it's a human warrior uncommon. When it enters the battlefield, deal damage to target player equal to the number of humans you control. It is, and it's a 3-1. I don't think this is worth it. It's not. 
Like, yes, you're, I'm not sure how much you'll be able to swarm with red humans. So, uh, I'll just wait and see. Maybe it'll be alright. Kruin Striker. For one colorless, one red. It's a human warrior common. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gains plus one plus... Um, Kruin Striker gains plus one plus zero and gains trample until end of turn. Um, the only reason... Oh, I, I was thinking haste. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's going to be another one of those cards that if red humans end up seeing play, this will be one of the ones that see play with the deck. Because if they can swarm decently, then this thing will get boosted up pretty well one for one turn. But that's the problem with it, I see. It's only for one turn. Whereas, like, Champion of the Parish doesn't have the trample, but it keeps its boost, which makes it that much bigger of a threat. Um, Lightning Prowess. For two colorless, one red. It's an enchantment aura, uncommon. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has haste and tap. This creature deals one damage to target creature player. So it pretty much makes it um, Goblin Fire Slinger that can also target creatures. Um, not worth it. Simple as that. It's not worth it. Mad Prophet for three colorless, one red. Human Shaman Common. <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Has haste. Tap it. Discard a card. Draw a card. And it's a 2-2. Two -two. No. There are, like, at least two blue cards that do it better than this. Um, its cost is too high. If it was, like, a two drop and it was a one one, it would be better. But, as it is, no. Malicious Intent for one colorless, one red. Enchantment Aura. Um, it's a common. Enchant creature. Enchant creature has tap. Target creature can't block this turn. Once again, not worth it. Raging po Poltergeist. For four colorless, one red. It's a spirit common and it's a six one. It what? I. Uh, it's not worth it. A lot of the like they have a lot of good re red support, but then there's just stuff like this. Like, they were trying to boost them, boost them, boost them, then they send in crappy support. Like this. I don't know. Riot Ringleader. For two colorless, one red. It's a human warrior common. When it attacks, human creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So pretty much it just has battle cry. And it's a two-two. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of like Hamlet Captain for reds. Um... So if red, like I said, red humans do see play, this will see play with them. Rush of Blood for two colorless, one red. It's an instant, uncommon. Target creature get, gets X plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is its power. Not worth it. Simple as that. Scalding Devil for one colorless, one red. It's a devil common for, and if you tap two, tap one red. Deals one damage to target creature. I don't see this. Think this will see too much play, but it can burn for quite a bit if you can ramp your mana. Like, I could see maybe like green, red, green burn. Well, burn ramp, I guess, because you can like prime evil titan, rampant growth, and get your lands to. So when this gets out, you can just keep tapping and get, and continuously burn. Which uh, won't be too consistent, but it it's an idea. Yeah, it's an idea. Somber Walled Vigilant v Vigilante, I think. For one for one red. It's a human warrior common. Whenever it becomes blocked by a creature, it deal whenever Somber Walled Vigilant Vigilante becomes blocked by a creature, it deals one damage to that creature. And it's a one one. Um it's not going to do anything. It's it's not that good. That that sure Thatcher Revolt, I guess. For two colorless, one red. It's a sorcery common. 
Put three one one red human creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield. Sacrifice those tokens at the beginning of your next end step. Now this is the red human produ token producer. Um, not necessarily bad, but it's a little disappointing. And once again, I think this is the only red human token producer. So, uh, it's I don't find it that worth it. But well, uh, it could be all right. I think if it was an instant, it would be, it would, it would be much better. Because then you could actually block with the tokens if you needed to. But I think the idea is just to go for three damage, I guess. Or just, yeah, just deal three damage. For Okay, next one is Thunderbolt. Um, for one colorless, one red. It's an instant common. Choose one. Thunderbolt deals three damage to target player. Or Thunderbolt deals four damage to target creature or flying. Um, I think this is better than um, Inferno. I, if I remember right, Inferno is like has a converted mana cost of three rather than two, so this instantly outclasses that. But it's not necessarily good. It it's better though. Like Red is getting a little help here with this card too. Anyways, next is Tyrant of Discord. For four colorless, two red. It's an it's an elemental rare. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent chooses a permanent. He or she controls at random and sacrifices it. If it's a non if it's a non land permanent, sacrifice this way. Repeat the process. And it's a seven seven. This is pretty cool. Yes, it has pretty high mana cost, but once I think it's another option for a reanimator. Because you can just like continuously destroy their stuff depending on how lucky they are. I think this is, this might be one of the cards I'm kind of hoping to pull up the pre-release, which, well, just for the pre-release games, if I can get them, if I can last seven turns and get this out, it's it could be game-changing. Which kind of spoils what one of the things I was going to say at the ending. But anyways, I'm just going to continue on as if I never said it. Uncanny Speed. For one colorless, one red. It's an instant common. Target creature gets plus three, plus zero, and gains haste until the end of turn. Probably the better of the red um, power-ups, but it's still not good. Yeah. Vigilante Justice. For three, re for three colorless, one red. It's an enchantment uncommon. When a whenever a human enters the battlefield under your control... It deals one damage to target Vigilante Justice. Deals one damage to target creature or player. Um, not bad, but I'm not sure if it would actually be used. Just another one of those cards, I guess. Now we're going on to green spells. Abundant Growth. This one's kind of cool. It's for one green. It's an enchantment aura. Common. Enchant Land. When Abundant Growth enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchant Land has tap. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So that's pretty cool. You can turn a just plain forest into anything you need at any time. Um, and you get to draw a card. I think this is pretty cool. I don't know. I, or you can get stuff like, um, I guess, Keswick Wolf Run and um, Ink Moth Nexus and turn them into... Um, Turn them into um, anything, into more than just. If you can't get their effect off, turn them into more than just add one colorless. Well, in the case of um, Kessig, and if you're not going to use um, Ink Moth, then yeah, you can use this on it and it becomes anything you need. Next card is another miracle card, Blessing of Nature, for four colorless, one green. It's a sorcery. Um, Uncommon, distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of creature target creatures, and its miracle cost is one. Um, I'm not sure how good this is going to be. I don't think it's going to be that great. So, uh, just another one of those cards. I don't know. Borderland Ranger. 
For two colorless, one green, it's a human scout, common. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. If you do, shuffle in your library. And it is a 2-2. Two -two. Um, I feel that this card would be much better if it put it onto the battlefield tapped, rather than into your hand. Because a lot of the lands you'll be using are going to be un like non-basic lands, like dual lands and Keswick and like I guess dual support, like what I said before, Keswick Wolf Run, Gaveny Township, etc., etc. Um, so it's not that good. I hate to say it, but Bower Passage for one colorless, one green. It's an enchantment, uncommon, a creature for flying, can't block creatures you control. Eh, sideboard card maybe. Uh, no. No. It won't see that much play. Diagraph ex Escort. For one green, it's a human cleric. Common, it has soulbound, and as long as it's paired with another creature, both creatures have protection from zombies. We're going back into things where humans have better th better things with protection from zombies already. So, this won't see that much play. Simple as that. Anyways, Druid's Familiar. For three colorless, one green. It's a bear with soulbound, as long as it's paired with another creature. Each of those creatures gets plus two, plus two. I guess for its cost, it's not too bad, but then if you look at some of the other green soulbound cards, you'll see that this one's, like kind of an in-betweenish which I'll kind of explain as we go on through this next one is eaten by spiders for for two colorless one green it's an instant common well not uncommon destroy target creature with flying and all equipment attached to that creature once again another eh, I don't think so. the more I think about it it might see some play because Lingering Souls tokens, and then if they equipped it with um, one of the swords or rune chanters for pike or something, then you've got you can get the use this, get rid of their sword or whatever, and get rid of their token, one of their tokens, which is one less blocker and one less attacker. So it's not that bad of a sideboard card, but I'm not sure if it's going to be too used. Geist trappers. Um, for four colorless, one green. It's a human warrior common, has soul bound, soul bond. As long as it's paired with another creature, both creatures have reach. Its cost is too high, it's... What I mean by that is that a lot of human cards, like lower cost, are like little stuff, like I said before. It's little stuff and it's... It's not going to see play. Let's just leave it at that. Gloom Widow for two colorless, one green. It's a spider, uncommon, has reach, and it can only be blocked. It can only block cr creatures with flying. No, none of the spiders see play. No, no spider card see play. This is not going to be an exception. Next one is Grounded, which is a pretty cool card. Uh, like, cool idea behind it, I should say. Um. Um, for one colorless, one green, it's an enchantment or a common enchant target creature. Enchanted creature loses fr flying. Frying, yeah, okay. That's a pretty cool idea. If you can get a creature to lose a certain, um, character, like a certain ability, like if they would make someone that made creature lose double strike, lose first strike, lose life, like I think this, it's a cool idea. It's just this one probably won't see play. Yeah, no, I didn't skip one. I'm just stupid. Last, last delve. No, layer delve. My bad. For two colorless, one green. It's a sorcery. Reveal the top two cards of your library. Put all creatures and lands revealed this way into your hand, and the rest to the bottom on the bottom of your library in any order. Um, no, it won't see that much play. It's not necessarily bad because you're thinning your deck and you're getting rid and you're putting stuff on the bottom of your deck you don't want to draw into as soon so not necessarily bad it's just probably won't see play yeah. 
Okay, natural end. For two colorless, one green. It's an instant common. Destroy target ag artifact or enchantment and gain, and you gain three life. Um, pretty cool idea. I just think, if I remember right, um, naturalized does the same thing except for for, except for one less um, colorless and it doesn't gain life, which is much better in my in my opinion. I don't think you need the life gain. So, next. Needle swine, n no nettle swine, swine I guess. For three colorless, one green. It's a boar common, and it's a four three. That's it. Not gonna see play. Pathbreaker worm. For four co colorless and two greens, it's a worm. Common has soul bond, and as long as it's paired with another creature, both creatures have trample, and it's a six four. Cool idea. I do like the soul bond mechanic. I just don't think this will be. Like if, it, if it was a smaller creature that gave creatures trample, maybe, but I don't think this one will see too much play. Maybe in Reanimator, like I, I keep referring to a Reanimator in all my videos. But, uh, I don't know. I don't think this will see too much play. Reign of Thorns, for four colorless, two green. Um, it's a sorcery, uncommon, choose one or more. Destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, and slash or destroy target land. Really diverse, but really costly. So it's not worth it. The cost kills it. If it was, like, three converted mana cost, and it was o pick one of the abilities, it would be a lot better. But, eh, this won't see play. Sheltering words. Sheltering Word. For one colorless, one green, it's an instant common. Target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. You gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Uh, once again, not necessarily bad, but it's not good. It's not worth it. I don't think. I, perhaps it's just because I prefer like permanent effects, but I just don't feel this is worth it because like I said, it only gives it for the one turn, and like I said, it's not necessarily bad though. So yeah, snare snare the skies for one rip green. It's an instant common target creature gets plus one plus one and gains reach until end of turn. I don't think there are that many flying creatures to which you should have to worry about this. Like, w lingering souls tokens are the first thing that come to mind. So, not not worth it. Terrifying presence for one colorless, one green, instant. <coughs> Common prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by creatures other than target creature this turn. Nope. You don't need to block damage, honestly. It's rather stupid. Timberland Guide for one colorless, one green. It's a human scout. Common, when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. And it's a one, one. <coughs> Just one plus one plus one isn't going to do much. You're not. You're, I don't think you're going to find too much of a way to get this back in your hand to just reuse it. And it's just not worth it. Trusted Force Mage for two colorless, one green. Um, it's a human shaman. Common. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> Anyways, soul bond, as long as it's paired with another creature, each of those creatures get plus one, plus one, into two, two. It's kind of like the bear, only it does just gives plus one, plus one, rather than plus two, plus two. Now, this is the lowest of them. It's not worth playing. Force Claw for four colorless, two green. Elemental Horror. Horror. Uncommon into seven seven. Yes, it's a seven seven, but there's just better stuff out there that you can spend six mana on. So, nope. Wandering wolf for one colorless, one green. Creatures with power less than wandering wolf's power cannot block it. And won't see too much play. I think there are other cards that do it better, but that's just my opinion. Just real quick, just because I'm getting uncomfortable. Um, Wild Defines, I find this card pretty cool. 
Um, for two colorless, one green. It's an enchantment rare. Whenever creature a creature you control becomes a target, the target of an instant or sorcery spell, that creature gains plus three plus three until end of turn. <coughs> My throat keeps bothering me. I'm sorry, guys. Um, reason I like this card is because like green infect, you can target them with um, mutagenic growth by paying two. Then so gets plus two from that, then it's because it was targeted, it gets another plus three, so it gains plus five. Depending on what you put that on, your opponent can get, like, if it's a Glessner Elf, they got six poison, at least. Yes, it takes a little time to get this out, but I find it could be worth it. <coughs> Wildwood Geist for four colorless, one green. It's a spirit, um, um, common. It gets plus two plus two as long as it's your turn. And it's a three three. Nope. Not worth it. Because it's not gonna do it's sometimes you're gonna need it for blocker and it's not gonna be able to block like if it was just a straight out five five or even a four four it'd be much better. But no. Wolverine Silverheart uh I'm gonna Oh, never mind. Wolverine Silverheart, I think I might have discussed this before, but this is one of the intro pack cards. For three colorless, two greens, it's a wolf warrior, rare, soul bond. As long as it's paired with another creature, each creature gets plus four, plus four. Now this is the top between the bear, the um, human, I forget what it was called. This is the top between the three of them. This is, this is the one that gains the most from soul bond, and I'd say it's probably the better of them. Though it does take a little while to get it out. I mean, get, giving one of your creatures plus four, plus four. Pretty good. Well, two of them, because this and the other creature. You Spirit. Um, for four colorless, one green. It's a Spirit Tree, fo tree Folk. Uncommon, for t and it's effect for two colorless, two green. It gets plus X, plus X, until the end of turn, where X is its power. Hmm... You can use it once to get it up to plus to get it up to six six, or then you can just use it again twelve twelve and twenty four twenty four. I guess, but not really worth it. I just don't think it's that good. That just might be me, or at least it won't see play. Let's leave it at that. <clears throat> now we're getting on to artifact. Getting into artifacts. Angelic arrangements. It's for three colorless. It's an artifact equipment. Uncommon, equipped a creature, gets plus two, plus two, has flying, as, and is a white angel in addition to its other types and colors. Other colors and types, and its, and its equip cost is four. Kind of kind of costly. It's another replacement for, um, another replacement for Angelic Destiny, but once again, Ang Angelic Destiny just does it better. Bladed Bracers, for one colorless, it's an, it's an artifact equipment, common. Equipped a creature gets plus one plus one, and as long as it's equipped it to a human or angel, it has vigilance. And its equip cost is two. Not worth it. <coughs> Just plus one plus one, that's not too much. And vigilance. Uh, I, I don't think this is that good. There's better equipment out there. Conjurer's Closet for five colorless is an artifact rare. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under control. It's another one of those flicker cards, which, as you should know, know by now, I find really stupid. Um, yes, they have their advantages, like you can like untap, like you can exile it, bring it back to have it untapped, but in this case, I mean, it's during the end step. It's, you can't even just use that card as a blocker. It's going to untap during the untap step anyway, so why? Uh, I just don't know. Gallows at Hill Willow Hill. Eh, tongue twister. For three colorless, it's an artifact rare. And for three colorless, untap it. Tap three untapped humans you control, destroy a target creature. Its controller puts a... One one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. No, it's not worth it. I just feel it's not. 
Yes, you're destroying something, but they're but you're giving them something that you most likely cannot block. So is it worth it? No. Haunted Guardian for two colorless. It's a artifact creature and it's a construct. <coughs> um it's an uncommon defender for strike. Two one. Eh. Guard duty. No must, no fuss, no problem. For all of you. That's kind of. I do like the flavor text in some of these cards. <coughs> Let me take a turn again before I decide. Eh. I think it's kind of stupid. It's Defender with First Strike. It's only going to take one hit. And, well, if it can't get the first. If the First Strike doesn't kill. So. It's kind of useless. Nars Narstad Scrapper for five colorless, an artifact creature construct. Common for, and if you tap two color colorless, it gets plus one plus zero until the end, st end of turn. Um, so it's kind of like the red spells that you tap the red and it gets plus one plus, one plus zero, but eh, I just don't feel it's as good anyways uh, it's not that good it won't see play um sorry about this um otherworld atlas for four color list an artifact rare put a charge counter on otherworld atlas each player draws a card for each charge counter on otherworld atlas um kind of a cool idea just not useful not useful but like I said, I do like the idea behind it. Now these two I put together because like the story is kind of linked, I guess. Scroll of Avacyn and Scroll of Grizzlebrand. Gonna start with the Scroll of Avacyn. It's and for if for one colorless, it's an artifact common. For and if you tap for one colorless, sacrifice Scroll of Avacyn, draw a card. If you control an angel, you gain five life. It's useless. Now scroll of Grizzlebrand. For one colorless, an artifact common, and for its effect you tap you um for one colorless, sacrifice scroll of Grizzlebrand, target opponent discards a card, then if you control a demon, that player loses three life. Once again, useless. Well I'd say maybe this is a little better, but it's not gonna see play. Neither of them are, but it's kinda cool. Tormentor's Trident. For two colorless, it's an artifact equipment. It's an uncommon equipped creature, gets plus three, plus zero, and attacks each turn if able, and its equip cost is three. Once again, just not gonna see play. Not, uh, Like, and you can get bigger, you can get pretty much get bigger boosts from, like, um, well, not bigger boosts, but you get but more benefit from, like, um, every single one of the swords. Uh, Rune Chandler Pike, and I cannot think of any other um, good equipment right now. But uh, another enchantment that's not well, equipment that's not going to see play. Vanguard Shield for two colorless. It's an artifact equipment, colorless. The equipped creature gets plus zero plus three and can block an additional creature, and its equip cost is three. I find this a really cool idea that I can block two creatures. I'm not sure how exact like I'm not sure exactly how that would work, would it still like block the creature's attack if it was killed by the first attack? Well, no, the damage would go simultaneously simultaneously. So it would block both creatures attacks and then you can have this for later too. So pretty cool idea. I like it. Just probably won't see play. <laughs> That's the thing with a lot of these cards, they won't see that much play. Vessel of Endless Rest. For three colorless, it's an artifact uncommon. When when Vessel of Endless Rest enters the battlefield, put target card from a graveyard to the bottom of the owner's library. Tap it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Probably won't see play, but it's not necessarily bad. I mean, just... 
I find that Bird of, Birds of Paradise is better. Um, I guess it's a creature. But it costs less, it has flying, so it can protect itself, and yeah. Well, protect itself when. If by some weird chance you need to attack. And you can attack with it if you need to. So, yeah. It might see play, though. I doubt it, though. Alright, that was the last of the cards, but I would like to note that the Abyssin Restore pre release is Saturday and Sunday, April 28th and 29th. If you're watching this, the day I upload it, it will be tomorrow and Sunday. Now, what I was saying before about one of the cards I want, I would like to see at the um, see out of my pre release pack, I am going to the pre release tomorrow. Well, probably. More than likely. And if I do, I'm going to try to get some videos, no guarantee. I'm going to try to at least do my packs. But don't don't be upset if I don't upload it. I'm sure none of you actually will. But maybe I'll do just like a little um, review on what I feel what I feel were good cards during the um, draft and what was bad and and you guys can tell me your opinions in the comments below, I guess. So yeah, I look forward to maybe seeing some pre-release content. <clears throat> so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, one thing I did want to get across before I before I'm done. Now that all the cards have been revealed, um, I'm disappointed in one thing with this pack, which I shouldn't be, but I. It's the werewolf mechanic, the flip cards. I really did like those, um, and there were some good ones too, like Delver of Secrets. Well, yeah, Delver. I think it's Delver of Secrets. I just know it as Delver, but I think Mayor of Everbrook's pretty good. Um, uh, Huntmaster of the Fells or Falls, one of the two. Um, was pretty good, and I just wish they would have done more with um, werewolves. I understand that it's just kind of coming to the end. The humans are like there's not as much chaos going on, so I don't think there's gonna be. So it makes sense that there wouldn't be very many like humans going werewolf kind of thing. Like, yeah, but I'm disappointed that they didn't bring it back for one more go because they'll never use it again more than likely they pro they more than likely won't which is disappointing so yeah anyways guys I hate to end it on a bad note but um that's the end of the video if you stayed the entire time and watched all three videos now thank you so much I don't know why you wanted to hear me just kind of ramble on for so long but hopefully you enjoyed and keep an eye out for more videos in the future. This is Gail Wolfex signing out after probably over an hour of video recording.